Please welcome our first time Dynamics.com presenter, Vidit Golham. Today, he'll be presenting his session on document management using SharePoint Power Automate and Teams. Please stick around after Vidit's session for a live Q&A. Hey guys, um, I'm Vidit Golam. Um, I'm a Dynamics 365 CRM consultant uh, working with CloudFrench Technologies, uh, Mumbai, India. I am a Microsoft certified Dynamics 365 Sales Functional Consultant Associate, a Microsoft certified Power Platform Developer Associate, a Microsoft certified Power Platform Solution Architect Expert, and also a Microsoft certified trainer. Um, so our today's session is going to be about document management using SharePoint, Power Automate and Teams. Um, in this session, we'll be widely covering uh, the following aspects of uh, SharePoint, Power Automate and MS, team, MS Teams. So in SharePoint, we'll see how to customize SharePoint permission levels to manage uh, roles like approvers, publishers, viewers. Uh, we'll also see how to uh, how to enable content approval and some site customizations. Our major highlight of this session would be the Power Automate flow, uh, which would run for multiple document libraries. You heard me right. It would run for multiple document libraries. Uh, MS Teams uh, would be our platform to just interact with our document management systems where the end users, that is the viewers, would view all the documents. So uh, let's begin with our use case. So our use case is pretty simple. Uh, let's consider that uh, this is a service-based, uh, you are a service-based company and you have three sets of users, uh, designers, architects, and developers. So your designers take requirements from the clients. Uh, they prepare process flow documents. Uh, they submit those process flow documents to the architects. The architects review those documents. And once those documents are approved, those documents go to the developers. Now the developers consume those documents. By consume, I mean they developed solutions out of those documents. So um, as I mentioned in the earlier slide, we have three set of users, uh, the designers, architects and developers. These are the permission levels of the user groups. So uh, the permission levels of these user groups are respected are, are in respect to the SharePoint. So our designers would have permissions to upload documents, request approvals. They won't have permissions to approve any documents or download any documents. They will have permissions to view documents. They won't have any permission to delete any documents. Our solution architects here in this case would be are super level users or are super admins. They will have permission to do everything on that uh, document library or that uh, SharePoint site. Our developer just needs to view documents and they don't need any other permission other than just viewing those documents. Uh, let's begin with our process. So um, our process is divided into two sub processes. One, uh, SharePoint, SharePoint setup, another Power Automate setup. So uh, we'll first begin with the SharePoint setup. Uh, in the SharePoint setup, I'll show you uh, the site deck, uh, which shows how we'll be setting up document libraries, how we'll be enabling content approvals. So I'm showing you this, uh, the uh, site deck uh, so that you get an idea of how uh, the process works. Once uh, each process completes, I'll show you the complete demo of, we, of what we saw in the slide, uh, in the slide deck. So let's first begin with our SharePoint setup. So in our SharePoint setup, uh, we'll be enabling content approval. Content approval is a major part of this since uh, uh, we'll, be up, we'll be needing those documents to be approved. They'll be in pending state. They'll be in draft, da, draft state and all of those things. We'll be creating some site permissions to manage the user and the user permissions groups, which we saw in our previous slides. Uh, we'll be setting up user groups. Uh, we'll also see some uh, minor site customizations which we need uh, to do to make our document management uh, process working. Uh, we'll apply some permission levels to these user groups. So uh, let's first begin with creating a team. Uh, let's first begin with uh, uh, the SharePoint setups process flow. Uh, 
So our process flow follows creating a new teams and adding team members to it. So why create a new team? So um, creating a SharePoint site might be difficult for some people might be difficult. So uh, whenever a new teams channel or a new team is created, a default SharePoint site is created with that team. So we'll be using a default SharePoint site, which is created with a team uh, to run our document management process. Hence, uh, after that, we'll be editing uh, the site permissions of that default uh, document library. We'll be creating a new, new document library in that uh, SharePoint site. We'll be enabling the content approval. We'll stop inheriting permissions. So um, how the SharePoint sites work is, uh, every SharePoint, every document library in the SharePoint site inherits permissions of the SharePoint site. So we can either set up this process in two ways. It This process would work on every single document library in the SharePoint site or it would work on a single document library in the SharePoint site. In this demo, for this session, I am only considering uh, a single document library in the SharePoint site. So we'll be setting up only a single document library uh, with the library permissions and everything uh, in the SharePoint site. Uh, after we stop inheriting permissions, we need to apply the permission levels, create user groups, create audit lists, and our SharePoint setup ends. So let's begin with uh, creating a new Teams channel. So creating a new Teams channel is pretty simple. You just need to click on uh, the join or create button at the bottom or at the bottom left of the screen. Uh, once you create the Teams channel, uh, in the general, in the default general channel of the Teams, you can see a section called files, which I have highlighted in red. So on that file section shows the default uh, SharePoint site, which has been created for the Teams channel. Uh, uh, in the teams. So in that file section, you can click on the ellipses besides the download button and you get a section, you get an option to go to the uh, SharePoint site. So let's now go to our uh, SharePoint site. So uh, this is our SharePoint site, which has uh, which the teams channel created. Uh, it carries the same name as the teams channel that is Power, Power Platform Experts. Um, uh, and there is a small slight logo beside it uh, stating that it is a Teams channel. Uh, in this Teams channel, first we need to go to content settings. We need, uh, we need to, first we need to click on site contents. Uh, when you click on site contents, uh, uh, you need to go to the settings gear icon over here. Once you click on the gear icon, you can see a site set, site permission sections over here. Uh, when you click on that site permission, uh, the screen would load for like two seconds or something. And you will see a new section over here, which says advanced site permissions. So once you click on advanced uh, site permissions, we move on to our next slide. In advanced site permissions, there are permissions levels. So these permission level determine the permissions of the users for the entire document library. Hence, so uh, the entire SharePoint, sorry, not the document library, the entire SharePoint site. So the entire SharePoint site um, is divided in uh, the permission levels, which you uh, which you see over here. So there is full access, there is design permission, there is edit permission, there is contribute permission, there is read permission. So we'll be using design permissions uh, for our designers. We'll be using uh, sorry, we'll be using design permissions for our approvers, that is our architects, solution architects. Uh, design permission uh, has slight less permissions than a super user. So it is equivalent to a super admin or a super user permission, but uh, it can't do all the global admin jobs. Hence, we'll be giving design permissions to our solution architects. Uh, with design permissions, our solution architects would be able to see all the documents uh, uh, in the document library, either they are in pending state or they are in approved state or they are in rejected state or they are in draft state. So hence, I call them super users. In the contribute permission, uh, the contribute permission users will be our designers. So our designers, as we saw in our permissions chart, 
our designers would have the permission to edit to upload any document or to download or uh, to edit or to upload any document but not to download or delete any document so our designers would be our contributors to this document management system hence we'll be giving them contribute access uh, to our end users that is our developers we'll be giving a special privilege which is called restricted view uh, we'll see that further on in our upcoming slides let's move on to our next slide so uh, the contribute permission has uh, some uh, permissions uh, such as delete or download or um, some other site customizations you can customize these permissions easily you can just uh, read the description which is given uh, uh, ahead of the permissions and that's really uh, easy to understand uh, for this demo uh, i don't want the designer level users to delete any to be able to delete any document or download any document hence i am removing the permissions which i have highlighted uh, in the dark so these are the original permissions on the right side of the screen uh, and on the left side of the screen you see the permissions which i have edited uh, so the permission level is divided in three parts uh, list permissions sharepoint site permissions and personal permissions so in the list permission sections you need to remove uh, the delete item permissions so when you remove the delete item permissions uh, what it does is it will stop uh, uh, it will stop the user from deleting any documents and open and view versions would stop the user from downloading uh, downloading any documents uh in the sharepoint site permission you need to uh, remove uh, browse directories and edit personalize uh, user information and in the personalize uh, in the personal permissions you you just need to uncheck uh, uncheck all of the permissions once you are done setting up the permissions um, either as per how i showed you uh, in this sharepoint or as per um, what um, you decide to do you can just click on submit button and that sets our permissions uh, the next part is uh, creating a, a document library you can click on this new button and create a new document library so uh, since uh, as i mentioned in the process flow there are two approaches of doing it either uh, editing either establish or either editing this for a single document library or doing it for or for all the document libraries which are which will be created or which are created um um in this specific sharepoint site so uh, we'll be only considering this for a single document library so to do that click on this new button and create a new document library name it anything what you want i have named it as a uh, flow designs so in flow designs you need to click on flow designs uh, again go to the uh, settings gear icon here uh click on the library settings this time since we are we will be editing the library settings uh you need to click on the library settings once you click on the library settings you will see uh, an option uh, more settings you click on that option so uh, more settings gives you um uh gives you a view of all the settings that you can edit uh, for that specific document library here is where the content approval and uh, uh, permission levels for the document library resides which you will see in our next slide uh, so once you go in the more library settings you see a section uh, under the general settings which says versioning settings so versioning settings is what enables content approval for that specific document library so when you go in uh, versioning settings you need to this will be toggled to no so the required uh, content approval for submission term will be toggled to no you just need to toggle it to yes no need to change any other uh, uh, any other uh, check boxes or any other radio buttons over here uh, just toggle it to yes and click on okay um once you are done uh, with the versioning setting just besides the versioning setting under permissions and management there is permission for this document library group uh since i like i mentioned in the past uh, that every document library inherits the permissions of the parent sharepoint site 
Hence, we say, and we are uh, setting up this process for only a single document library. We need to have unique permissions for that document library. So uh, we need to stop inheriting permissions from the parent SharePoint site. Hence, we need to click on the stop inheriting permissions. Uh, once you stop uh, inheriting the permissions, you will see uh, the screen which I am going to show you in the next slide. So once you stop inheriting permissions, you will see a lot of options over here. Uh, delete unique permissions, uh, generate permissions and these uh, will be disabled. So by default for for a Teams a SharePoint site, uh, there are three groups uh, which are created uh, members, owners and visitors. So member group consists of all the members that are present um, in that specific team site and every team's team creates an office 365 group of members. Uh, so in this member group uh, on the SharePoint document library, you need to you will see a powerpoint uh, a teams uh, teams uh, members group you need to remove that member group since we will be uh, adding custom users or custom groups uh, and enabling permissions for those custom groups so you you need to select the default member teams member group uh, uh, from this uh, members group from this document library member groups and and click on remove users from this group so once you remove uh, the members from this group uh, you need to add uh, members to these groups you can either add directly add users to these groups or uh, you can uh, add you can create a office 365 group and add that group to this member group uh, once you uh, are done adding members to these groups, you need to assign permissions to these uh, groups. So these will be our three groups. So as you can see, owners, owners will be our uh, architects and those architects will be uh, are assigned a permission design members. Members would be our designers and they are assigned permission contribute. Uh, visitors visitors view will be our viewers and they are assigned permission restricted view to assign permissions select uh, the member group uh, click on edit user permissions and uh, uh, give the permission you want so one tip quick tip over here is that uh, you won't see the restricted view permission unless you upload uh, you upload any document to that document library so if you are not seeing restricted view permission, don't panic. Just upload a document to the document library and you will start seeing the restricted view permission. I don't know the reason for that, but uh, that's how SharePoint works. Um, so uh, once we are done setting up uh, the library settings, uh, we come uh, to our document library. So in our document library, um, now since we have enabled the content approval, you see the approval status over here. Uh, uh, we need to create a new uh, uh, column over here. Uh, this will reside uh, a button which will call our approval flow. Um, we also need to create an audit log. So what this audit log does is uh, it will tell you, it will give you an idea of uh, what documents are approved and rejected. Uh, in this demo, this aud audit log is visible to all the users. Uh, this is just a list uh, in this uh, uh, it is just a list in this uh, SharePoint site. So you can configure uh, configure the permissions for the list to make it visible only for super users. So uh, with that, uh, let's begin with our SharePoint demo. So on the screen, uh, we see our Teams channel. I've already created this Teams channel as you saw in my demo. If we go in the file section, uh, we uh, see the SharePoint site. Uh, in the Teams channel, we click on the ellipses, we can see uh, open in SharePoint button. Uh, once we click on this open in SharePoint button, it will take us to our document library, which I have already opened, which is opening here. So um, in this document library, uh, we need to go in content settings. Uh, we need to go in uh, site permissions. We need to go in uh, advanced permissions. Um, we need to go 
in this advanced permissions we see the permission level over here in this permission level uh, we see all our permissions when you click on the permissions it opens it will open the permission you can edit the permission as i uh, as i showed you in the slide and you just need to hit submit i will close this i will go back to our uh, uh, sharepoint site once we are done setting up the site contents we go to flow uh, flow designs uh, that is our document library in the document library we need to go to uh, library settings we need to go to more settings uh, here is our versioning settings we click on versioning settings we click this from no to yes and we click ok and we are done setting the versioning setting we go back uh, we see your permission settings for document library um, we need to uh, disable the uh, inheriting permissions i have already done that that's why you see delete permission over here uh, in this member group there will be a mem default uh, group of uh, members uh, of the teams channel you need to click on that and you need to remove that uh, so what i have done in here um, i have added the design teams uh, office 365 groups so what i did uh, i have created office 365 groups if i go to my admin center here I've created a developer group, developer team group. Uh, this is an Office 365 group. Uh, it's loading and it will show you all the members in that group, uh, the developers. So I go back uh, to our slide. Uh, we need to click uh, new and we just need to type developer or design. Uh, this is a design group. So I'll type design and it gives the group. There is an option here, uh, send an email invitation. If you don't want uh, the users in these groups to receive an invitation, you can just uncheck this and click share. Once you share, the groups gets added. Uh, we go back to our permissions. Once we are done adding uh, all our members, uh, we need to click, uh, we need to select the group and assign, click on edit permissions and assign permissions to the, to the groups. Um, you remember you won't see a restricted view unless you upload any document to the uh, to the document library uh, now we are set with the site contents and we are set with uh, we are set with our uh, design uh, document library uh, we need to create a new uh, column over here you can click on add columns and create a new column in this new column you need to click column settings and you need to uh, format this column so uh, once you format this column here is a small script uh, which uh, is which we use to call uh, the power automate flow um, so from where how I got this script uh, there is an amazing MVP named Laura Rogers so she has written a blog uh, on um, uh, on uh, calling a power automate flow uh, 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 in a document library i will link uh, uh i will link the link to her blog in the chat box uh you can refer that uh, for this script um i i have opened it uh, i have opened this clip you don't need to uh, change anything uh, from her script uh, from her script all you need to do is add your uh, power automate flows id over here i will show you how to do that uh, when once we are um, uh, in the uh, setup power automate flow section so once that's done once uh, you have uh, added the script just save and you will see the approve uh, approval button so uh, what happens here is um, when whenever a user uploads any document it is in pending state so uh, only for the pending state uh, this uh, start and approval will be visible so if i just uh, mark it manually to rejected this will disappear so that's how uh, the but the flow will work i will just uh, put it back to pending so that's what pretty much what we need to do in our sharepoint setup uh, we are done with our sharepoint setup let's go back to our uh, presentation and let's see uh, power automate setup so in power automate setup we have uh, two um, flows one uh, is the document approval flow and another is uh, an email notification flow so in the document approval flow we'll see uh, 
a document approval we'll create a document approval flow um, and we'll see how it runs uh, for um, uh, our uh, document how it runs our document approval process uh, we need to share that flow with a design team uh, so that they can use that flow um, we need to make sure that the flow runs with the admin uh, credentials uh, this is the process flow of the flow uh, this is the flow uh, i'll be showing you this flow uh, the working of this flow so this is just uh, all the steps um, of the flow um, this is the email notification flow um, so the important part about this flow is common questions which i know many people have tried uh, developing or have tried building this flow but these are some common questions which uh, they had faced this is what i had faced when i was uh, uh, attempting or i uh, tried to develop this flow so will this flow run for multiple document libraries yes it will will this flow sh uh, flow not showing in document libraries so uh, in order to make in order to make your flow uh, run in a specific document library you need to put it in the default environment of your tenant if it is in any other production environment or sandbox environment that flow will never show in your sharepoint so make sure that you create that flow in the default uh, solution of your tenant what happens when the document library changes the flow runs so uh, we have adapted the flow to run uh, even when the document library uh, chain, name changes will the flow handle all document types yes it will uh, set content approval status not working so or stuck so uh, since we'll be approving the uh, document there is a, a action uh, in the flow which is called set content approval and i have seen a lot of communities questions a lot of questions on the community on this so this happens if you are not running the flow with uh, an admin permission so if a, a user is running a flow and if that flow is running in the context of that user and that user doesn't have permission to approve the document the flow will stuck and it won't give you any uh, in information it will just give you uh, it will just say that the query failed so that's why it happens uh, we'll also see an interesting topic format data by examples so this will make your life a lot more easier uh, with handling expressions flow expressions so with that let's begin with our power automate demo so um, here is our power automate demo just one minute yeah here it is here is our flow so uh, this is our document approval flow so we run uh, for uh, a selected file so how are we so what is important here is uh, since we'll we are dealing with sharepoint we'll be using a lot of sharepoint connectors and for all sharepoint connectors i'll just edit this flow it is loading it takes about 15 seconds yeah here it is so for all sharepoint flow to uh, do any action um, on on sharepoint like content approval or update anything uh, dynamically for multiple document libraries you need to know the uh, site address and the document library name so that's the catch here so how do we dynamically bring the site address and the document library name or the document library id so what we have done here is uh, if i go to the document library uh, here is our document library if you see uh, if i just click on the url over here if you see after four forward slashes we get that is one two three and sorry not here i'll just open a document uh yes here so after four uh not here not here i will be opening this document yeah so as you can see over here after four um uh, slashes forward slashes one two uh three and four you get the um uh, 
site name and after the fifth slash you get the document library name uh if you see the trigger of the uh if you see the trigger of our flow i'll go back to our flow uh for a selected file what this trigger does is um i will just show you a flow run uh, so that you get a better understanding of that it is loading again takes about yeah so if you see the flow run if you see in the outputs if i go and show raw outputs in the body you see we get the item url the item name and the file id so from this item url we'll be getting the url of the document uh, of the sharepoint site and the uh, name of the document library so what happens here is uh, for uh, for different documents there are different urls for example for a word document you get a layout section over here for a uh, 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 pdf document you get the document library name over here so what i have done in this flow is i will uh, go back to my flow again yeah so what i have done uh, in this flow is that um, i'll just edit this back yeah so uh, we are getting document lib uh, we are getting the document library url i'll show you how to form this expression we are getting the document library name and we are getting all of that from our select files uh, uh, we are getting the document library name um, uh, we are getting the file guid uh, so uh, the document library name either can be layouts or it can be uh it can be the document library's name as we saw uh in a word document it comes as layout in a pdf document it comes as a document library's uh, uh document library's name so uh if we go back to our flow again uh that's what we have done here if uh it is a word document or a, or an excel file or a onenote document or a video document uh it will come as layout if it is a pdf uh or a text file it will it will not come as layout and it will give us the uh, file name so uh, when we get the file name we are creating the file path using the uh, the library name and the file name when we get uh, the layout we are decoding the url uh, and we are processing uh, we are processing the url to get the file id so one interesting part over here is that when uh, we use uh, uh, word documents or whenever we are using documents or layouts we get uh, the files id uh, in this link uh, in case of pdfs and other documents uh, we are not able to get that so uh, what i have done in here is that i have used uh, uh, i have i have used expressions and i have used format data by expressions for example uh, since we are getting the document library i am decoding the url here i am just using i am just using uh, an online tool to to decode this url so let's just consider uh, we have decoded this url and we go back to our document library page uh, to our uh, doc flow we click on format examples so our decode url uh, will give us uh, some output like this so what we'll be using here is uh the decoded url which we got and uh, what is the desired output the desired output from this decoded url is this id so we just put uh, this id in here um we we go back to our flow again and here we if we generate the expression Uh, here is what uh, we get the expression now let's test our value i will copy this entire url i will go to our flow again i will paste it here and just test we get that id so it's that easy to use just put the initial uh, initial state just put the output which is coming from the init from that state uh, set the desired output and you and this will create uh, uh the the desired output for you magic right so now that makes uh, uh our life much more easier with expressions so 
once we uh, get uh, the file id we'll be using uh, an api to get the file details and through this file details we'll get the document library's id so uh, getting document so why i'm using id is if you change the document library's name if you change the name to something else uh, for example if i click uh, over here this name will change this name won't change it will always be flow design so if you change it to design it will still be flow design and your flow will fail hence for that we need to use uh, document library's id so uh, what i observed here is that even if this takes name in the front end it takes uh, it is actually mapping the name to the id of the document library so um, how we do that so from this step we get uh, the document library the document library's id the document library's id is returned by this api so how we get the document library id it is in the body in the list item fields in the parent list and id so uh, i will go back to my screen and i will show you how it runs so if we go in our this step if we go in the outputs if we go in the body in the list items in the parent list we have our id over here and that's our uh, document uh, that's our document library's id and that is what makes this flow run for all the document libraries even if you change the document library name so that's our hack here uh, once this is done the flow is simple you just set the uh, content approval to submitted this helps uh, with uh, with not causing the content approvals to to stuck you and you follow uh, your regular approval process here once it is approved you set the content approval to approved once it is rejected you set the content approval to rejected and you notify the team and you create an audit log so uh, uh, we are also using this audit log uh, to to uh, send an email notification of all the approved documents so we'll go to the to our email notification flow now uh, in this e email notification we are just it it runs every day at 5 pm or you can run it at uh, any time you want um, uh, it just gets uh, the audit log records it is getting all audit log records if you want to get uh, approved audit log records uh, you can get that if you want to get audit log records um, uh, for from a for a specific day you can uh, get that in, and you can put it in the filter query uh, we are just uh, creating uh, we are just creating an array of all the documents and we are just converting those documents to pointer you will find these expressions easily on the internet uh, and we are just using this expressions to uh, expression to uh, send an email notification of all the uh, of our audit log so let's just quickly see a, a, a short demo of how this works so uh, in our document library we have uh, we have already uploaded uh, some documents so let's assume that i am a devel i am a developer user so i will start an approval uh, what it does is it will send it will send an approval uh, uh, where is my slide yeah it will send an approval uh, uh, approval request to your requester in the team uh, your approve your requester will approve or reject the request once that request has been approved uh, you get email notifications saying that either your request is rejected or your request is uh, approved also um, this is uh, the list of the documents that were approved if you want to see uh, that list in the audit log uh, this is how it would look like and uh, that's uh, that's uh, was my session was all about. Thank you guys. Uh, thanks DynamicsCon uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, uh, it it was it was fun uh, and uh, I'm open to any questions. Uh, also, uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn, uh, my blogs and my Twitters for any questions.